Hi everyone, welcome back to Brookdale Farm. Today we're going out to plough some fire brakes using our Massey Ferguson 178 and this uh, Scarifier plough. This is a sort of fairly rough homemade frame that we use for doing ploughing our fire brakes um, and it fits on the three point linkage on the back of our tractor. I just thought today I'd uh, take a moment to have a look at the three-point linkage with you. Um, these two arms here are part of the three-point linkage. The third link goes in the top here and forms a parallelogram uh, between the, the three points where they hitch onto the three points on the implement. This, um, and it's hydraulically operated, there's a hydraulic ram internally in the gearbox here underneath the seat that operate these arms here to lift the two lower links up and down. The lever for doing that is this one here next to the operator seat. Um, so it's very easy to use. This particular system was developed by Harry Ferguson in the 1920s and 30s. He had several prototypes that he built himself. The first commercial production of this was a partnership with Henry Ford uh, on one of the Ford tractors. Um, and it was a very successful system because for the first time you didn't have great big long levers on your implements where you had to get off your implement, uh, off your tractor to raise and lower your plow or whatever you were using behind you. Now, the partnership with Henry Ford only lasted a few years uh, before he went into partnership with somebody else to make the uh, Massey, the first little TA20 Massey Ferguson uh, tractor. These were a brilliant little tractor and they came out in 19, 1946, I think, and all the Massey Fergusons have sort of followed on from there. The, the grey Fergie, as the original one was known, because of its colour, uh, was a really light tractor that was really popular amongst dairy farmers and people like that. Um, and after the success of the Ford tractor and then the Ferguson tractor, these hitches ended up on just about every tractor you could get uh, and you still see them regularly on modern tractors it's the easiest hitch anybody has yet come up with um, there's a few there's the americans uh, the internationals i think had a two-point hitch that they used which was a similar principle um, but the the three-point hitch is the one that has stood the test of time the best so we're now going to hitch it up to our our scarifier uh, and I'll I'll show you how we do that and we'll go and uh, plow some fire brakes so this is the top link for the three-point linkage each end has a, a swivel joint in it's got two threads here this one's had a pretty hard life over time you can see it's been welded up here and been strengthened up here um, one of these is a left hand thread, one of them is a normal thread. So when you turn this bit in the middle, it works like a turnbuckle and it changes the length, either makes it longer or shorter. And we use this to change the, to set the angle and the level of our implement. When you're hitching implements like this up regularly, you get pretty good at backing straight up to them the first time so that uh, the hitches all line up. On this particular tractor there are also solid links with turnbuckles to stop the bottom two uh, three-point linkage arms swinging around too much. 
many tractors just have chains to stop them swinging um, but here I'm just adjusting the length of one of them to make it fit uh, this machine better. Next we put the two pins in the two bottom links. This machine is quite awkward to hitch up because it's very hard to actually reach in far enough to put the pins in. Now we put the top link in, I usually find it easier to attach the top link to the tractor first uh, and then to the implement. So now that we have this hitched up, we can see the three points of attachment a little bit more easily. We've got these two lower arms here and the third top link there. We can see how if we change the length of that, we will change the angle of the whole machine and the way it is sitting. This is a really handy uh, hitch and there's all sorts of implements that attach onto the three-point linkage um, so we'll get on now and we'll go and do a bit of work unfortunately at this point the camera fell off its mount and I didn't realize how soon it had uh, fallen off um, so unfortunately I didn't get too much footage of actually plowing fire breaks So I was just doing the fire breaks around the wheat and I just thought I'd take this opportunity to stop and uh, have a quick look at the wheat. It's looking pretty good. Um, the heads are a reasonable size. You can see that there's a little bit of green in here still. So this is a couple of weeks off harvest yet. Um, but yeah, some of these heads are looking really good. So it should be a reasonable yield with any luck. And I just thought I would show you this bit. It's a reasonably clean crop here with almost nothing else in it. Right next to where I'm standing we've got a spray miss um, on the radish spray and you can just see how much um, radish we have 
uh, in the soil in this paddock um, that we're trying to deal with. Um, it's quite a nice straight line down there where the, the um, spray line ended. Um, and yeah, radish is an amazing plant. It's a big deep rooted plant with a big tap root and it puts out, it produces so much seed. Um, if only there was a market for this, we could do really well. Um, it is a really great sheep feed, but it's there's no no good market. No one wants to buy it, um, and it competes with the crop and drastically reduces the yield. Um, but luckily, this is only a little tiny patch, um, and the rest of the paddock is pretty good. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and learnt something from it, and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks. Bye.